I've had some really deep conversations the last four days regarding earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom that we can tap into, or the third dimension of heaven where the teacher and the instructor lives, the heavenly commentator that helps us understand the football game of our life and gives us the comments of the dimensions of the kingdom so we don't get lost in earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. Those that love strife, right? So, um, see the pine trees out here? I'm going to talk about a little friend of mine named Lily. And this little friend is about four or five now. And I've known her since she was in her mother's womb. I knew her mother in her mother's womb. So there's something really special that Lily has to teach us about becoming like a little child. Because Jesus put it this way, unless you become like a little child, you're going to in no way inherit the kingdom of heaven. So as we look at this pine cove tree, I want you to think about being 18 months old, like a child. A lily, when she was 18 months old, could not identify or name a pine tree. But through the course of time, she could identify colors, she could identify wagons, she could identify a flag, she could identify a pine cove, cone tree, but she still went on a trip and she probably on that trip, even at four years old, was going, wow, wow, wow. She'd been constantly wowed by revelation of the spirit, like the angels of heaven are, are crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, because they're being wowed by people that tap into the third dimension of heaven and trans and because they receive spiritual wisdom, they can be a transmitter of spiritual wisdom. Selfish people that are self-serving and living for their own happiness that really haven't taken on the form of a servant are constantly being wowed by what other people do that are affecting their little happy place. So there's not, and I, I likened it to this way with a friend years ago, I said, we can get so lost in details, it's like being lost talking about the apples of the tree and not identifying the spirit. So when we're like a little child, we're constantly being, oh, that's what the spirit of fear looks like, the flag. Oh, that's what the spirit of unbelief looks like, right? Oh, that's what the spirit of control looks like, the wagon. So we understand more dimensionally demon because casting down princes, powers, rulers of darkness. We're not in a flesh and blood battle. We're in a spiritual battle and we get saved, like Dan Song said, by the words we get. We Every day we live by his words, right? We don't live by his words when we're double-minded about not getting enough earthly, sensual, cup full but, you know, there's an unholy trinity, and that unholy trinity starts with being earthly. And the second thing is being sensual. So when we're all worried in the desert with the devil that we're not going to get our little earthly, sensual life fulfilled and our happiness completed by what's in the world and by the honor and praise that comes from man, it's the unholy trinity that gives us devilish wisdom, too. We, we tap into devilish wisdom, right? And we don't even see it coming. So in Dan's song, This Bread on the Water, I mean, it has the whole kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of hell exposed in it. It's a long song, but <laughs> what takes away our praise? People don't serve our little happiness and our little praise and honor that comes from man and we lose it and we become unhappy because we're self-serving and we miss a double-minded woman double-minded man shall receive nothing from the lord we get the commentator from hell that gives us earthly sensual devilish wisdom so if you have strife and bitter envy glory not lie not against the truth for this wisdom doesn't come from above it comes from 
earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. It's why loving strife and loving contention is such a horrible thing because we become receptors of the first and second heaven where earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom comes from. I need, I need, give me, give me, give me. I need, I need, I need. Save me, fix me, help me. I went by the field of the slothful, the woman void of understanding. It was all full of earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. And she had a gun pointed. This is Proverbs 29, I think. It talks about going by the field of the slothful. The crown on their head is earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. And they pull a gun on you to fix and save them and help them and give them a diaper change and give them a bottle. Because strong meat belongs to those who have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. And so we were talking today about how, how does a conscience become seared? We become a seared conscience when we're acting out in our life earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom that happens in our mind that comes out of our mouth. We give people nothing burgers. We give them earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom, right? From the first and second heaven. We eat our own poison that sears our own conscience as we feed that poison to other people that has no bread of life, no living waters, no understanding the wiles. Give me this day your daily bread. Deliver me from evil, Lord. Deliver me from the first and second heaven of earthly, sensual, demonic revelation. But people that are terrified that their little earthly cup isn't going to get full and their little sensual cup isn't going to get full, they can't even get anything out of the third heaven. They're too worried about the first and second heaven. And my gosh, man, I had a, a friend that died recently. I was even talking to his wife about the horrors of selfishness, the horrors, because we don't even see that we're re receivers of the first and second heaven, where our little belly isn't going to get what it needs with the little, you know, they, and there's a great proverb about that too, that's only in the Aramaic Bible in chapter nine, because I live by every word <laughs> that comes from the Bible. Living waters come out of my belly that I've turned at. But it says, um, those that deny things falsely. So when we deny that the spirit of our mouth isn't right, we lie to ourselves. A lot goes down there just from self-deception because we're feeding somebody junk food. And for the grace of our lips, the king isn't being our friend. The other commentator is being our friend. The one who is the glasses of earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom, the unholy trinity, that's the commentator that makes us just terrified that we're not getting the praise of men we need and the earthly, sensual life we need, taps us into Satan's government and his kingdom. And so we become receivers of the first and second heaven, and we become transmitters of, we take ground for, the wrong king and the wrong kingdom. That's why Jesus is the bread of life and we can live by his words. Like Dan's song says, every time I listen to that song, I get more revelation of how deep the kingdom of heaven is and how deep the kingdom of hell is also, where there is no living water, where there is no bread of life. There's just pissed off, angry people that aren't getting their little earthly world and their little sensual world the way they want. So they get some devilish wisdom and they act out their bitterness. They act out their offense. They act out their rage and vengeance because they keep the house empty and demons come back into play and take ground for the wrong kingdom. So I'm gonna pray this prayer. Our Father, our Father, who's in the third heaven, may your government and your kingdom come on the earth through me. May your will be done instead of my little earthly, sensual, devilish, unholy trinity life because I'm so terrified I'm not going to get what I need in honor and praise of man and in earthly, sensual play. May your government come. May your will be done. Deliver me 
from the wiles of the devil today, the earthly, sensual, devilish, unholy trinity of hell, so I can do, deliver me from that grip, Lord, where all bad doctrine comes from, the bread of hell, the living waters of hell, you know, that make people thirsty for throughout eternity. Again, I have a lot of scriptures that fly through my head because I've hidden a lot of wor words of God in my heart so I don't sin against them and being pressured in relationships with people. Because when you put on the glasses of the holy commentator, it's wow, 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 wow. I see that spirit. Oh, I see that spirit. Oh, you're not angry with people anymore. You're excited because you're like a little kid who's singing into a third heaven. And life becomes really, really exciting when you're not angry and offended with people anymore. So open our eyes, Lord, to the wiles of the devil, to be unforgiving because of how we get pressurized by people who make us unhappy today. So we can act out life in your kingdom, being a receiver of third heaven information, where we can go after the root of the problem and call the spirit, the spirit it is, instead of bobbing for apples with people that bob for apples that never quite catch the apple because we're lost in all the apples and we can't see the spirit through all the trees in the forest because we're not in a flesh and more battle we're in a spiritual battle as soon as we make it about people who sear their conscience by what they allow themselves to think and say and do we can't help those people who have seared consciences because of how, because Satan gets in their brains and their thoughts and Satan's government comes out of their mouth, we can't help them anymore. All we can just point the finger. And once we do that in Isaiah 38, you fast for strife and debate. You fast for your own pleasure. You fast because of your own glory, your own kingdom and your own power. That's what Isaiah 58 is about. You serve the Lord for your own putting yourself forth, not to wash feet, not to love your brother. That's what Isaiah 58 is about. That's why Jesus had a holy moment with the disciples saying, I greatly desire this meal with you because I'm going to show you one of the most holy things you can ever do, that your joy may be full in how you love your brother. I'm about to show you that one of the most holy things you can ever do is wash feet, but you have to take on the form of a servant because back in Jesus's day, they walked through a lot of excrements of animals and it was a really 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 nasty job that nobody wanted to do was to wash feet of everything that defiles the earth and animals and people anyway I hope this opens your eyes because everything that pressurizes you today is your divine opportunity divine opportunity to go wow 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 and become like a child and identify princes, powers, and rulers so you can make a difference in people's life for the sake of his kingdom, his power, and his glory, not your little belly that's terrorized that you might not get what you want on the earth, or your little senses be tickled, and the little honor and praise you need from men gets tickled, and you get a lot of devilish wisdom in that realm. So God's not evil. And everything that happens to us today, Jesus is Lord, and he sits on the throne. Amen.